Hello class, today I'll be going over for you the details for our lab about the atomic mass of pennies and isotopes. And though we're doing this to learn about isotopes and average atomic mass, what's interesting is that by the end of it, you'll be able to have an envelope that's sealed with a mixture of pennies that were made before 1982 and after 1982. And without opening it, you'll be able to tell me how many pennies in this were made before 1982 and how many were made afterward. So this lab is meant to simulate some things about isotopes. And recall that isotopes are two atoms that have the same number of protons which means they have the same atomic number, which means they're the same element. So they have the same number of protons, they're the same element, these two things that are isotopes. But what's different about them is they have different number of neutrons, and that makes them slightly heavier or slightly lighter than the other atom. And we could investigate isotopes and analyze isotopes if we had a piece of equipment called a mass spectrometer. But we don't, and so what we're going to use instead are pennies. And we can use pennies to simulate isotopes because they have a lot in common. So they could be said to simulate atoms of the same element. But what's different about them is that some pennies are slightly heavier than others. And it's mostly based on if they were made before 1982, because pennies made before 1982 were made of solid copper. They weigh about three grams. Pennies made after 1982 were made of mostly zinc with just a thin film, a thin skin of copper around the outside. And those weigh about two and a half grams. You can see I've got examples here. This is one of the heavier pennies or one of the heavier isotopes, we'll say today. It was made before 1982. And then these would represent the lighter isotopes, the ones that are made after 1982. If they say exactly 1982 on them, it's about halfway through the year that the government switched. You can actually hear the difference when you drop them. This is a pure copper penny, and this is a copper-coated zinc penny. So what you're going to do is you're going to take some measurements, and you're going to try to figure out in an envelope that is sealed how many of these pennies are old and how many are new. How many are before 1982 and how many are after 1982. So here are the materials that you'll need. You've got an old penny, a new penny, an empty envelope, and an envelope that has a number or letter that has 10 pennies in it where some are old and some are new. It's sealed, you don't know, but we wrote them down ahead of time. Now, what we're trying to figure out is the average mass of a penny in this envelope. And when you think about that, if we have this penny that's like three grams and this that's about two and a half grams, it's tempting to say that the average mass of a penny is really just those two combined and then divided by two. And so you would say that the average mass of a penny then is 2.75. But that doesn't really take into account that the mixture in here is not going to be an even number of these and these. It could be, but it doesn't have to be. Just like if you were to grab a sample of 100 pennies and you weighed the total mass of them and then divided by 100, you would probably not end up with 2.7 because that would assume that you would have 50% of these and 50% of these. Instead, what we do is called a weighted average to figure this out. That's how we're going to use these as isotopes because heavy and light isotopes for a sample are usually not evenly distributed. So I'll get these out of the way, collect some data, So the only data you need to collect would be the mass of the new penny, the mass of the old penny, the mass of an um, empty envelope. Which envelope do you have? 
and its total mass. Now I'm going to calculate the total mass of the 10 pennies in the envelope, which means that I'm going to be subtracting this, which was the 10 pennies with the envelope, and I'm going to be subtracting 4.215 from it. I get an answer of 29.202. To calculate the average mass, we do know that there are 10 pennies in every envelope, and so it would be to divide this by 10. Now the 10 in this case was an exact number, it was a counting number. We knew that there were exactly 10, and so this did not have any effect on the number of sig figs in our final answer. Now it says using that average mass plus the mass of old and new pennies, the formula for calculating average atomic mass and systems of equations determine the percent in this envelope that were old and new pennies, as well as their actual number. And so what I'm gonna first do is write down the average atomic mass formula. And so if we had more than two isotopes, you would go to C, D, etc. But the average atomic mass is the sum where you take the product of a mass of each isotope times its percent abundance as a decimal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace what I have up here uh, with some of these things. The average atomic mass would be the average mass of the pennies, so 2.9202. Mass of isotope A I'll call the post-1982 pennies. Percent abundance of A, I'm going to now be more specific and say that it's the percent of new pennies. The mass of B times the percent of B, and that would be referring to the old pennies. So now I've got an equation with two variables, and when you have just one equation with two variables, you can't solve for it, unless you use a system of equations. So I do know another type of relationship between these two variables, and that is that since there are only these two isotopes that the percent of new pennies and the percent of old pennies when you add them together should be 100. Because these have to be decimals for their percentages I'm going to actually say instead of 100 they will equal 1. And how this helps is that I can rearrange it so that I can solve for just what the percent new pennies is in relationship to percent old. So I'm going to subtract percent old from both sides and get that 1 minus the percent of old pennies equals the percent of new pennies. The reason this helps is because now in this equation, every time I see this variable percent new, I'm actually going to replace it with this statement because then I will only have percent old pennies in this equation and I should be able to solve for it. Now to solve this, it's really just an algebra problem at this point. So I'm going to distribute the 2.559 to here and here. I've got these two that are both multiplied by the percent of old, so what I'm going to do is subtract 2.559 from both sides. Now I'm going to combine these since they're both times the percent of old pennies. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.569 to get the percent of old pennies as a decimal. Now what we get is that there are 63% of the pennies in here should be old, 
which doesn't totally make sense because there are, are only 10 pennies in here. So we can't have 6.3 pennies that are old. Instead, we would round it to six old pennies and four new ones. And there are some reasons for that. We made some assumptions. We made the assumption that this envelope weighed the exact same much as this envelope, which is not necessarily true. And while in real life, atoms that are the same isotope would have exactly the same mass, we made the assumption that all pennies made before 1982 would have exactly the same mass and that all pennies after 1982 would have exactly the same mass. But again, that is not true. And so those assumptions that we made were sources of error in this. So six old pennies after rounding and four new ones. And I'm going to go and check that. All right, so after checking, I was off by one. Instead of six old pennies, like I had predicted, there really should have been seven when this was originally packaged. And again, some of the sources of error would just be the assumptions we made about the masses of these individual pennies and envelopes that were measured versus all pennies and envelopes.